When you go to the doctor to get your blood work, one of the things that is often included is a basic metabolic panel. Another form of it is a renal panel. And that tells you how your kidneys and how your electrolytes and how everything is doing inside of your body in the set of one report. Today I want to give you some clues on what those different readings mean and how to interpret them at home. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board certified kidney doctor. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And everything we talk about here today is just information. This is not medical advice. Of course, labs are best meant to be interpreted by your physician or your nurse practitioner or your physician's assistant. Whoever has ordered the test needs to do the interpreting. But oftentimes, that blood work will come to you before your doctor has seen it or had a chance to interpret it. So I'm going to give you a quick 101 on a basic metabolic panel or a renal panel, tell you about the things that you'll see and what they mean. The basic metabolic panel typically consists of seven blood test results. The first is sodium. Sodium is an electrolyte that floats around in your body that helps all kinds of things. It helps the nerves, it helps the muscles, it helps your brain. Sodium is necessary for everything. Now, a typical range on that blood work will be 135 to 145. Now, every lab is different, and you can look on that reference range to see what your specific lab's reference range is. Now, your sodium can come back as too high or too low, and it can mean a whole lot of different things. Believe it or not, though, most of the sodium readings on that metabolic panel are related to your water, your fluid status, not necessarily to how much sodium you're eating. If your sodium is too high and out of that range, it could be related to medicines, it could be related to not drinking enough water, it could be related to losing water in other ways from being sick. A low sodium can also mean a lot of different things. Now I'm not going to get into what a low sodium actually means because that is complicated. That's something called hyponatremia and that can be related to too much water. And hyponatremia can be caused by so many different things from medications, to heart failure, to liver disease, to kidney disease, to lung problems, to brain problems. There are so many things that can cause low sodium that you really need a doctor, specifically a kidney doctor, to help interpret that. The next reading on that metabolic panel is potassium. Potassium is involved in all kinds of things just like sodium. It's involved in the heart conduction, it's involved in the muscles. So potassium should be in a very specific range as well usually between 3.5 to 5.2, but again, depending on the lab, will determine what that range is. Now, the kidneys are involved specifically in handling the potassium. So if the kidneys are not getting rid of enough potassium, that potassium can go up. If the kidneys are getting rid of too much potassium, then that potassium can be low. There are other ways to lose potassium as well, specifically through things like uh, diarrhea and through your stool. And there are other things that make the potassium high. And people with kidney disease sometimes eating too much potassium or certain medicines can make potassium high. If you're outside of that range, your doctor will be able to look at it and figure out what the next step will be. The next reading is something called chloride. Chloride is, uh, well, it's kind of a marker of other things. On that lab, that is the last thing that I look at. And I look at the chloride only to help me interpret the other readings. So don't spend too much time looking at your chloride. Your doctor's probably not looking at it very much either. The next reading you'll see is the bicarbonate, and that's a measure of the carbon dioxide in your blood. We use the bicarbonate level to help determine the acid and base status in your blood. Acid base status in your blood is determined by your kidneys and by your lungs and by your bones, by a lot of different complicated processes. And this gives us a snapshot as to how those processes are working. It doesn't give us all the answers, and none of these labs really give us all the answers. It just gives us a snapshot, a clue, to kind of interpret your whole body and your whole lab tests. Now, kidney disease is associated often with an acid-base imbalance in your blood. So sometimes with kidney disease, that bicarbonate level will go down. Now, sometimes that bicarbonate level in people with kidney disease will go down below 20 or go down below 15. And that may mean that the acid and base balance in your blood is not perfect. Sometimes medications help address that. Sometimes we just monitor it. I'm not your doctor, but make sure you talk to your doctor about what that specifically means. 
The next reading on your metabolic panel is called the BUN, the blood urea nitrogen. Say BUN, don't say BUN. The BUN is a measure of the urea nitrogen that's floating around in your blood. Now that can go up in some people who have kidney disease because the blood urea nitrogen is something that is excreted by the kidneys. There are other things that can make that number go up or down, such as volume depletion or being sick, but it's a marker that we as kidney doctors look at to see how well the kidneys are filtering that blood urea nitrogen. One of my favorite readings on the metabolic panel is the creatinine. The creatinine is what I, as a kidney doctor, use as a first surrogate to figure out how well those kidneys are filtering. I have a video on creatinine that you might want to check out to reference right here. But creatinine is something that is in everybody's blood. And creatinine is released into the blood when your muscle cells kind of turn over on a daily basis. Old muscle cells die, new muscle cells are formed, and those old muscle cells should go through the blood and be excreted in the urine by the kidneys. Now, if the kidneys aren't working as well as they should, that creatinine will sometimes go up. Essentially, like a drain that gets clogged, that creatinine just builds up a little bit in the blood. So as your creatinine level gets higher, it may mean that your kidneys are not filtering as well as they were before. The last thing you'll see on the metabolic panel is the glucose. And the glucose is representative of the sugar level in your blood. If that sugar level is going too high, it may mean you have diabetes or prediabetes. Now, that level has to be interpreted with when you last ate. So if you're fasting, your sugar is expected to be lower than if you just had a big sugary meal. If you had a big sugary meal or lunch, that sugar will be higher than it is if you're fasting. So make sure you look at that when you're interpreting it. Okay, I'm going to give you three bonus labs. First thing that's sometimes included on the basic metabolic panel is the EGFR, the estimated glomerular filtration rate. The glomerular filtration rate tells you an estimate of how those kidneys are filtering. That's what kidneys do. They filter. They do a lot of other things, but one of the main things they do is they filter out waste products. So your glomerular filtration rate on most labs is shown to be greater than 60 if your kidneys are functioning normally. Now, as people get older, that level tends to go down some. And people who have a level less than 60 may have something called chronic kidney disease. If you have a level lower than 60, you may want to talk to your doctor about what that actually means. Now, if you have a level that's high, like 100 or 120, probably means you have a fantastic kidney function. Now, these other two labs are something that show up on a renal panel, not a basic metabolic panel. These are things that we as a kidney doctor like to follow. The first is phosphorus. Phosphorus can go high in people whose kidneys aren't working well because phosphorus is excreted by the kidneys. So we like to look at a phosphorus level. If the phosphorus is too high, sometimes you have to have a medication to help lower that phosphorus down or you may have to change your diet to help keep that phosphorus in the normal range. And the last thing we look at is something called the albumin. Albumin is a protein that's in your blood, and if you have kidney disease, especially diabetic kidney disease, your kidneys will leak albumin into your urine. And the more albumin that you're leaking or spilling into your urine abnormally, the lower your albumin may be in your blood. So that's one of the markers that we like to look at as kidney doctors. Now, low albumin can be caused by a lot of things other than kidney disease, malnutrition, or illness in general. Any illness or liver disease, heart disease, any illness or malnutrition can cause that albumin levels to be lower than normal. It's just another surrogate marker that we look at as doctors to see what's going on. Now, when I look at your labs as a kidney doctor, I don't look at these individual things. I look at everything as a whole. I look at your whole medical problems together with those labs to try to figure out what's going on with your body. That's why I went to four years of medical school, three years of residency, and two years of fellowship. Plus, I've been practicing 15 years. I look at 20 of these labs a day to tell me how to interpret them. It's very difficult without that kind of knowledge to understand what these things actually mean and what you need to do about them. But if you have a basic knowledge like I've given you today of how those labs work, it can really help you go into your next doctor's visit informed 
and knowing how to ask the right questions. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board certified kidney doctor. This is all education. This is not medical information. Make sure you check out my website, cookingdoc.com, my book, The Cooking Docs, Kidney Healthy Cooking, A Modern 10-Step Guide to Preventing and Managing Kidney Disease, and I will see you next time.